Happy May 2 for a weekend. <laughs> I'm just remembering back to my youth with a little kiss. This reminds me of May 2 for a weekend. <laughs> I'm going to turn it off before I get a copyright strike. <laughs> Maybe I'll just turn it down and then we'll get busted. Let's see. I'm not going to cover anything too crazy today or great research. Uh, it is the weekend. It is, uh, well, May 2 for weekend isn't what it used to be. It's not. It used to be getting together with friends, first time out after a long, long winter, and well, they're not going to let us have it. So we're going to have to change that. <laughs> I'm an 80s graduate, graduated in 85, so KISS was always part of my world, and you know, I'm a, I'm a woman who loves road trips, so that's what I always used to do. I remember living in Penticton, and uh, well, May long weekend in Penticton, BC is crazy. It's just not going to be that way this year for us in Canada. It seems that a lot of people all over the world are, well, in the United States, things are opening up. In Canada, it is clamping down. In Manitoba, they just issued the edict that well, you can't meet outside with people outside your own family. This is how bad it's gotten. Hi, Lillian, how are you? <laughs> Regine, Bruno, nice to see you. Yeah, it's one of those weekends while everybody's off or, you know, <laughs> trying to have their first holiday of the year. And you know where I live in the north, like we're in the north. <laughs> Not the far north, but again, um, this weekend, uh, the powers that be made sure the weather sucked. They did. <laughs> because we had 31 the other day. It was unbelievable. Um, I was out power washing my deck and getting my house all ready. I been repairing a, some old rotten drywall. So that's what I've been up to the last couple of days. <laughs> Trying to make my house look nice because I'm selling. I'm getting ready to vacate. I don't know where yet. Not sure. <laughs> hey, Carl. It's the weekend. Get out there, people. Live your lives. It's all about choices. Truly it is. Well, in Manitoba, they're not getting much choice because, you know, they're not even allowed to meet outside with uh, people outside their family. It's, uh, it's unbelievable what's happening here. Um, I, Carl, uh, sent me something lovely today and, um, actually I've got it all set up, so I'm going to let you listen to it because, well, finally we have a politician calling a spade a spade. <laughs> and this is great because, um, well, I'm going to let you listen to it. Let me get over there and turn it around. It's real quick. <laughs> well, 
I do believe he did uh, share some accurate and informed information, and I am so happy to see a politician calling a spade a spade. Thank you, because that made my weekend. The fact that he didn't retract it, well, makes me have even more respect for the man. Um, again, um, I talked to an old friend from uh, Toronto. I met him in Toronto many years ago. He used to manage a health food store he used to do business with. And he moved to Medicine Hat, back to where he was from. And he's lost three people in the last year. Two of which he's lost, which was an aunt in her 60s and a cousin. Both of them just got the one with blood clots and the other one that was infirmed and in the hospital where they did it. They actually uh, injected her with a vaccine when she was already undergoing uh, problems for kidneys. And then they released her and then she died, liver failure. So it's happening, it is. And now it's two within a family. It's very, very sad, it's dark. And well, a lot of people are, you know, this guy is bright, he knows and he sees what we see. And that's why he recognizes it, but so many people do not see that they see the vaccine as a benign and that's uh, ultimately sad for all of us. Oh, I wish you a good weekend there too, Carl. Carp has been working hard to bring darkness over our heads, but we will all get out of here when the sun comes back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy is great. We need politicians that would stand up. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is an economic hijacking and um, we're being shown Chinese manners. I talked about that on Monday's video. <laughs> Lengthy video, that one went on for an hour and a half. <laughs> but it was uh, very poignant. But it seems people really aren't catching on <laughs> to that. Um, somebody is though, because they were recommended to me and to that video from a small town in Saskatchewan. And um, I'm going to be doing some more investigating because, in fact, there are people gathering evidence as to this economic hijacking. We're going to cover it coming up. Lots going on under the ethers, and it's so easy to get distracted. A lot of stuff happening on the ground and right now it's boots on the ground, eyes on the ground, looking into your communities, going to those hospitals, checking out those parking lots, seeing if anybody's at work. Because everywhere we go it's the same story. They're empty. And they have circumvented the flu. Um, I was looking uh, through CDC uh, flu numbers in the states. And it's interesting because the flu numbers sort of end again in uh, 2020. The 20, usually when the surveillance would begin in 2020, it didn't, just like here in September. And on their website, it talks about the low prevalence of the flu, like basically um, not there. But the interesting thing is that the uh, COVID stats are pretty much equal to what the flu is and was estimated to be. They've got the numbers of the prevalence um, from 2000. So really, we've swapped out the flu <laughs> for this. Things are coming down and they're coming down fast. I'm getting a lot of messages and um, honestly having a lot of private conversations lately with people that are experiencing some really uh, sad stuff. Uh, again, family going to get the jab. I read some stuff yesterday of um, 
people who are getting vaccinated and making sure they go to the anti-vaxxer protests so that they can shed. Seen that. Um, you know, it's just a whole lot of nastiness I've never really noticed in our society before. Um, I'm super disappointed. But all we can do is just uh, keep on keeping on, right? The flu is a four-letter word now. It is. Allergy season canceled for sure. Oh, okay, so I walk. It was 31 degrees the other day here Celsius. And here we are. Uh, I, I, I'm out for a walk and I was the only one barefaced. Again, this is normal here. They like the muzzle. They're wearing it as a fashion accessory under here, under their chin, like a necklace. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? Again, um, I, I'm not sure how the sick, I'm sick look. <laughs> That's why it was a lot of the reason I created not a mask, because again, it's that psychological visual of a I don't care if you, if it's lace or you paint it up or make it pretty, it's a muzzle over your face. And no, it looks like a surgical implement. It's a non-medical mask. It's the visual and the psychological picture of a sick society. It's like celebrating the lowest common denominator. It's interesting. In any case, um, I, I thought I would, uh, you know what, I'm going to do a little advertising for not a mask today because you can breathe in these. You can. And they look nice around your neck. You can twist them. <laughs> do all sorts of fun things with them. But the nice thing is, is they're up and down. This one's hazy days. Now I can't keep my mom on program. Um, it's impossible. <laughs> so I'm not even trying anymore. So she came up with some of these lighter hazy day ones. You see the difference. <laughs> it is quite a difference. But if you want these, just let me know. Um, just send a message when you order. Order hazy days and tell me you want the lighter one. I've also got China Blue. And I also still have a, this one, Sustainable Fable. I just don't have it on the website because I've only got five left. <laughs> and, of course, um, we created these ivory ones because we know that there'll be occasions coming up this summer where the powers that be think that it's okay to wear a muzzle to your own wedding. And I really hope that women will uh, absolutely refuse that nonsense because there's an alternative and it looks nice. I'd never let anyone destroy my wedding with a muzzle. Not to mention no one would be entering with one on. <laughs> oh, the media is questioning the second guessing the CDC. Should we really take off our mask? The corporations don't have any intention of you taking off that mask. The mask is forever. This is about liability, guys. This is what it is. The human face has become a liability. That's what it's all about. <laughs> it, it's more than protect. I mean, it's not protection from a virus. We know that because none of them work. Uh, that would work better than the ones with the gaps in them. <laughs> Chiffon is like the uh, best filtration fabric in class. We got two layers. I didn't make a slouch. I made sure it would compete and be more effective. But at the end of the day, nothing protects you from a virus. It's minuscule. It's tiny. It can, it can get through anything. And if you are in contact and you are going to get it, you are. What we have to do is just arm our immune systems. This is what... We do. Like for me, I take no less than 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. I make sure I'm good to go. Before I did that, like three years ago, I wasn't doing that. And I was always taking immune boosters, mushrooms, astralagus, echinacea. I was on all the herbs. And I did that for about 10 years, 15 years before that. 
Um, but once I started the vitamin C, I didn't need all that stuff. And that is the reserve. That's when I really need to kick my immune system. But the vitamin C is absolutely imperative. Vitamin D as well. I take a lot of that, over, always over 10,000 IUs a day. I found out from practitioners that the whole don't take it or take you know, one drop, two drops. No, yeah, you you need it. And now I have bone issues and it turned it around for me. Absolutely. <laughs> Mask equals good slave. Well, you know, here's the thing, Carl. Some people have to wear them all day. Um, I had a Canada Post location in the south of Saskatchewan. Every employee was in them because the muzzle sucked. And then Canada Post sent out the muzzles that they must wear all day, the cheap crapola disposable Chinese ones. Or sorry, no, they sent them cloth ones. And now they have to wear those and they can't breathe. It sucks. Um, I'm asthmatic. And I know that when you are like, when you're in close quarters like that, you are breathing in that humidity and putrid bacteria. If you have any remnant of illness in you. You need to get it out and you cannot be with them <laughs> breathing that in again. You can't. You won't in mine. <laughs> Not to that extent for sure. You don't get wet and clammy and your face doesn't break out. That's huge. It is. Um, I believe keeping your eye on the ball is what we need to do and at the end of the day breathing is a number one and I don't believe we need to suck it up in the muzzle, which is why I made an alternative, <laughs> because I wouldn't. I'm not a civil disobedience kind of girl. I never have been. Um, I, I pretty much play by the rules. I, I try to. <laughs> um, again, when you're confronted with people even denying this, like Dr. Shabab going after not a mask, just to exert his force, yeah, I think that's pretty pathetic because at the end of the day, it's all about not seeing your face. They just want to sell China's product and that's what everybody's buying here. They are. Even if they're making them here, the fabric came from China. So again, it's this is a Chinese industry and of course we have created a, well, more waste than plastic bags had been for 20 years. <laughs> I walk outside and I, it's shocking how, ma how many masks are just all over the place. In fact, I'm seeing a lot of garbage around our city like I've never seen for years. It's <laughs> so a lot of pride right now. I don't see that outside, not reflected. Sharia law masterpiece, well, yeah, because I knew exactly what it was and I thought it was really imperative to make everybody else see what it was. <laughs> Maybe that's why Dr. Shabab is so pissed at me. <laughs> see, I believe in in your face, I'm in marketing. But at the end of the day, it's on and off and that's what I like about it. And You'd be surprised how many people forget to pull it up and end up shopping the whole entire time without. <laughs> it happens regularly. I get reports from all over. We have to do what we can do. At the end of the day, um, again, I, I, I sort of fell, fell into the freedom thing. Um, I am a free person. I exert my free will. And when it came to a point of being threatened all the time, it sucked. So that's why I did what I did. And I think a lot of women particularly were uh, very happy about it because they were suffering anxiety. And where I live, people getting threatened. It's not worth it to me. I think I'm taking enough for the team. <laughs> In any case, if you want to try any of these colors and you do not see it on the list, let me know. Just send a message and we'll make it happen. Got a few other little products to introduce. Um, I'm cleaning out my basement and I forgot I had these. <laughs> but these are awesome. I even took them to Africa. They are the family buzz patch. You won't find them in the health food stores because they want to, well, 
keep you away from things that are safe and effective. <laughs> That's Health Canada. In any case, these are little patches. So there's 12 squares in each one. And you just peel it off, put it on. And I use these in Africa, guys. <laughs> they were effective. Um, I don't want to use the DEET and the, again, the toxics. We have enough going on. And of course, now that they're sanitizing the shit out of everything, we have never had this level of, again, disinfectants and products designed to kill our gut bacteria and, and to kill our natural immunity. So every solution is another one. With these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell them for 10 bucks. They usually go for 15 plus tax. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten the box so I can get them in an envelope and I'll land them for that. I also um, getting together too. I've got Palo Santo essential oil. I brought this back from Ecuador. I've got two of these. So I'm going to blend them up um, with some carrier oils or well, you guys tell me. Um, I've got the Pure, and that's a little more expensive, but I thought I would maybe blend them up with carrier oils and do them in something like this. And then it's like an insect. Now, this smells really good, but it also works as an insect repellent. I burn the wood, and in Ecuador when I'm there, we actually burn the chips to keep the mosquitoes away, and it works brilliantly. Again, essential oil rather than toxic substance. Um, Palo Santo is from a tree that's endangered uh, in Ecuador. Um, it's not harvested while the tree is alive. It actually has to go through the life cycle and die naturally, and then after, it can be certified, and then they extract the essential oil from the wood. And that's what burns on the wood used in ceremony and all sorts of stuff but uh, and and again a lot of people use it for mosquito repelling in the smoke and of course in the essential oil so I'm gonna get those going and put them on the not a mask site trying to clean out my place <laughs> gotta go chop my deck apart uh, lots of it's rotten and I'm trying to chainsaw it apart <laughs> skill saw it I don't know I'm just trying to find a saw in any case Lots of work to do, um, just uh, getting my house uh, in, in saleable condition. <sighs> Not much action this weekend, and the weather sucks. So I don't think a lot of people, again, you know, are, are planning to do things. Hi, Mo, Michelle, Les. <laughs> it's about Nancy in your face. <laughs> Well, you know, like that guy, like that counselor, uh, call a spade a spade, right? This is what it is. It's hijab we are doing. This is hijab. It's the separation. It's a curtain or a barrier <laughs> between you and society. The mask is exactly that. It is. And they're fashioning it as a new public social norm. And again, institutions and corporations. It's all about egalitarianism because this is what's going on. We have a communist takeover happening <laughs> and they need to make us egalitarian stat. That's the idea of this game. No one is privileged. Everyone is the same. And according to the powers that be or the Chinese, they believe that, you know, if we all wear the muzzle and we all look alike. And again, that's why they don't want to see any deferring from the standardized model that they've chosen for men and women. Again, it's not acceptable. <laughs> and I won't wear it. Um, we do what we can do. In any case, uh, in other news, we've got uh, Chris Skye, who was arrested uh, in Ontario. Um, bit of a drive, but apparently that's not stopping him. He's on his way across the country to speak at all his all the rallies, the freedom rallies. Um, yeah, Joe. <laughs> you see, when you when you when you have somebody who's being arrested and 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 charged with things like uttering death threats and all of that. Um, 
And, and then you want the freedom movement to have credibility. I, I don't understand how they think those two can go together. I don't understand. Now, I don't, um, I've had problems. Um, when I had my magazine, though, in Toronto, I will, uh, and, and not in Chris's defense, because I don't know anything about that case. Um, I've looked up a bit, and I haven't seen much about it. Um, but I do know that if they want to get to you, they will. That's Toronto. Um, my Mini Cooper convertible was sabotaged in Toronto in 2009. And uh, that, from what I deducted, the police uh, helped facilitate it, let's just say. Um, I didn't pursue it because I was hitting walls. And, well... The first clue that something happened or something weird um, was the fact that a police officer apparently s sat in his car waiting for me to come out for from like three in the morning or four in the morning till two o'clock the next day. It was very suspicious. Um, and apparently it was a drunk driver that hit my car at 4 a.m. and ended up driving halfway through Toronto and somehow the police caught him. It was the weirdest story. It made no sense. Trying to follow it up was made pretty impossible. And I finally gave up. In any case, so I understand that again, Chris is pushing the envelope there and there could be that in there. But again, once they put you in that category, when you're in PR, you have to know that you can't come back from that. And if you continue aligning, then you're delineating your concerns. You are. Our concerns are becoming so buried that they're never going to come to light. And, and this is the issue with all of it. it sucks. The line is being disseminated here in Toronto. They got a free Palestine angle going now. They are. Um, here, funny enough, downtown, now last Saturday, um, I was walking to my health food store and, well, there was, I think, nine or ten freedom protesters and they had a police car for each of them. There was screaming and yelling. I heard that from three blocks away. I finally went up and took some film watching and it was it was ridiculous the police presence but apparently at the very same time there was a Palestine uh, protest at the legislature with a whole lot of people and there was no arrests or issue or uh, again it was publicized too and not a word um, it's very interesting but the bottom line is, is they are literally sealing the casket on the reputations of freedom protesters. And they're doing that for a reason, to seal us all in the <laughs> box of no return. Making our freedom seem as if they're selfish. People need to quit looking for leadership and start leading by example. I love that, Carl. Everyone who does it does get results. People have to have all the power. They simply need to use it. There's no white knights coming to save us, folks. It's our duty to be responsible and fix the problems. This is it. See, everybody's waiting for a hero, and this is what the New Order wants. That's, that's the name of the game here. They need to keep the hope going, so they need all of these saviors. Yet at the end of the day, I, as I know, I put on protests. Nobody came. I had a group of 5,000, and they left us hanging to dry every single time. They're all like, go, 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 but nobody shows. <laughs> And quite honestly, the last protest, it made me ill because we arrived and uh, the pro-maskers, basically the, the opposition that had been contrived, because again, nobody cares in this city. They didn't like it when we were protesting in front of Dr. Shabab's office. Why? Because that is control central. The legislature means nothing. They don't care down there. And that one? Two times in a row, we had seven media outlets. And I wouldn't talk to any. I talked to CBC the last one. 
when they were there inter interviewing the pro masters prior to our, our arrival even. So that's what was going on there. They set him up. They had Mr. No Pants show up. It was like minus 10 and the guy had no pants on. They're standing there with a sign on Albert Street. But again, um, the dogs were sent when we protested there because he's in control. And then when we didn't have any protesters at that one, we had, we used the snowbank for like, we had 20 signs and it was brilliant. But then they cleared that. <laughs> I finally decided to be done with it. It just, it, again, we were not, we, all we were affecting or I was affecting was like threats. And I don't know, again, with nobody showing up, what's the point? You're not affecting anything. You're doing a marketing and that's how I was seeing it as a, as a marketing endeavor. And that was that. They're being tagged as anti-bagel eaters. <laughs> Protesting is legal acceptance. Rallies are only good for connecting. They're good for connecting. And what I found, Carl, was they were awesome for interference because that actually has become their function in my mind. Controlled opposition elements being thrown in. Like the first time, um, I, it was a bigger protest. Uh, it was when the mask was just coming out. And I did two interviews, uh, CTV and Global. And I went on for 10 minutes with both of them. And I honestly, um, I hadn't done interviews for a long time. And in my past, I'd done hemp. <laughs> it was romantic. Everybody loved it, right? So there, nobody was uh, waiting for that single word to come and pounce, but they sure did it with the mask. But then they also threw in um, two guys that came at the crowd and there was already a person set up. So again, it, interference was going on. And again, I, what, what I was seeing, because I had a magazine for five years of my life, I've been in journalism for many years, this, the narrative was literally being set up and being set up with certain participants. And I watched it go down over and over and over again. It's very frustrating, but at the end of the day, you're leaving yourself wide open and exposed when you do a protest. You are. So when flags show up, you have to have people on that shit. And when I suggested it here in Regina, they were just horrified because they thought it should be inclusive of everyone. <laughs> and I'm going, well, you know what? Maybe you should go to the BLM protest because that's their line. Because here we know that they want to corner us as white supremacists. We know that. That's a given. They've been doing it for over a year. So when you know that, and it is absolutely established, you must, and it's incumbent on you and your groups to absolutely ensure that it cannot be. <laughs> you have to be beyond reproach. I'm a PR. And that's not happening here. And what happens again, Chris Sky, it doesn't matter if he's innocent at this point, they buried him because most people will never follow through with the whole story. They won't. I can tell you, uh, after those interviews I did, I, straight up, I used the word that the, I, I said in my, the interview that the mask was demeaning and I meant it. And they demonized me for it. It took months to get over that one. And again, anything like that, it's it, the gaslighting is extreme. But we have to be better. And we cannot allow for that. And, and this is why I've kept my distance. Because again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm talking facts <laughs> of what I know to be true and what I see on the ground. I'll tell you though, um, they still put me um, from that rally in the summer, they put that film on just about every article, uh, even until February, March, when I haven't been at a freedom protest since September, but they keep trying to align me. And that's what's going on here. They just want to pigeonhole you. The thing is, I know that most people that are going to the protests are absolutely legit and they truly care about their freedom. They do. 
off topic, but were you interviews by George Nuri? I don't know who you're talking about. Rallies can deliver results if good plan and strategy gets put in place. Most rallies are controlled opposition in order to help buying time for the evildoers and the agenda. Yes, Carl! <laughs> you know! You know! Kind of trust the plan. Well, see, that's... Uh, in Saskatchewan, I have to tell you, trust in that plan is the general... Uh, I belong to a number of groups and I was, you know, this was last spring even, a year ago, over a year ago, putting my information out there and I was talking about Agenda 2030 and all of that and I could, I could feel the yap yap under the ethers because as I discovered over the months that a lot of people were trusting the plan and there was whispers that I was full of shit. <laughs> The thing is, these people don't understand the plan that they are trusting is Agenda 2030. That Q is a PSYOP. And I can't tell you how many people tried to drop that nonsense into my group. The thing is, I was a year ahead of them. I was calling a year and a half ago, calling that they were going to be cornering Q supporters or anybody who gets their information from that source as a domestic terrorist. And this is exactly what's happened. The thing is, in Canada, people aren't taking that seriously. And I suggest they do. Because this is exactly whether they want you. Uh, somebody sent me indictments this morning. And I'm like, okay, all you have to do is go through the, through the first three. I did this a, a year and a half ago. It's nonsense. <laughs> We're not winning. It's, I believe Q is a manifestation that emanated from China and the World Economic Forum. I said it over a year ago uh, with a, what's his name out of Australia? It was live. Um, da, 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 I got to compute. Sorry, it's been a while. Vinny. And I said that. And guess what happened? Like we were live and he has been doing that podcast for 15 years. And guess he said it's the first time it's ever happened. I was saying it in my videos last summer, uh, just about a year ago, um, when I was censored on BitChute, 20 of my videos. Every time I mentioned that Q was a PSYOP or the World Economic Forum or the Great Reset, because all of that was six months too early. They didn't want the Great Reset mentioned until... October-ish. And that's when it all started coming out, right? It wasn't wanted before. Because the controlled opposition has the narrative. The other thing about that is the fact that the Great Reset like, is to the goals of Agenda 2030. That is the legitimacy of it all. And that's how they're doing it. Q and Trump work for the Black Sun. Trump is a 33rd degree Freemason who is dealing with Bill Gates from hell and now is pushing the vax. I got, um, Q was my first experience and then BLM was my next one um, and that came around August when I started No Mask Sask. Before that I'd had absolutely no contact with BLM ever. Um, except that I called out, uh, their protest as a setup. <laughs> yeah, I call it as a marketing rollout. And I was, because they launched the mask. They did. And me coming from a marketing background, I could see all that. It was a rollout. Their last minute protest here had a state of the art PA system. And guess where it was plugged in? <laughs> to the legislature. Because there was no external power source. I set up shows. That's, these are things I look for. And that morning, they had a setup story of racial profiling. And it was a lark. I checked it out. It was nonsense because the original poster disappeared. Take a good look at the Q logo. Yes, well, this is it. The Q, I... Q and BLM actually feed each other. And um, as an energy person, they operate in the very same energy. They do feed each other, and I do believe both of them emanate from China. <laughs> um, see, when I started dealing with uh, BLM, that's when I got doxxed. 
<laughs> that's been fun. Um, again, pain in the ass situations. And again, people getting into your private details. Um, somebody has martinecarlina.com, .ca, all of that. Um, it is called Cyber Name Technologies out of Ottawa. They grabbed it and then somebody else grabbed it. And, well, uh, it seems to have Turkish origins. I'm digging. I'm figuring it out. In any case, um, I went and I had to get the real Martin Carlina <laughs> which I haven't set up yet. But this is what's going on. Um, I saw that Chris Sky dot com is actually some sort of Chinese game website. So you should check that out. Um, so again, hijacking our names. Crazy. See you, Carl. Nice to see you. Ron, we just had our emergency broadcast system hijacked and abused by our own brown shirt provincial government telling us to stay home. You're in Manitoba, Winnipeg, right? So you're not even allowed to go outside and say hi to anybody. You can't be without, uh, it's crazy. Happy May 2-4, right, Ron? <laughs> the days of the party weekend apparently are over and they definitely want to take well, I think we're being taught Chinese matters. I talked about this last week, uh, last Monday, um, and that was confirmed. And I don't know if anybody, if you if you hadn't seen that on Telegram, I actually have posted an article the following day, and it was a uh, Chinese senior advisor that said that we are being put in our place, and it is absolutely true because it is an economic hijacking mandating of a product that originates in China in the mask. Again, another reason to get not a mask. You're supporting my mom's therapy. <laughs> Honestly, she gets a kick out of sewing. That's what she does. It wouldn't matter if it was these or she'll have something else going. So we might as well get people breathing. <laughs> A lot of us are pissed off. Well, Ron, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I, what do we do? You know, I've been kind of out of the party scene for a long time. And honestly, you know, I've got my tea. <laughs> In the old days, it would have been a tequila around this time, but um, no, not anymore. Life's going to change a lot. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, research into uh, the jobs that are going to be disappearing, and this is going to start happening really quickly. A year ago, I was speaking about, in my videos, um, about the fact that this was all about, well, number one, deleting our history and the way we've done things before. But number two, well, they want to destroy intergenerational gal uh, wealth right now. Like by 2030, they want all these kids to be egalitarian. So what this is going to be coming up is literally a gutting of, well, gutting of professionals. That's going to be a big one. And a lot of people aren't understanding that. The AI that's coming in is going to pretty much get rid of about 60%. They're saying 55, 60% of jobs. And a lot of those in the professional fields. Like, for example, a construction worker, well, that'll be no more. Um, trades are going to be seriously limited. Again, AI robots for our safety, right? Um, even lawyers with blockchain. Doctors swapped out. Teachers. Of course, it's funny because, see, I know teachers and nurses are going to be going. <laughs> a lot of them. But they're not mentioning that because right now they need them. So you're not seeing that in a lot of literature. But in any case, Monday, um, or even, you know what, uh, I'm going to take this weekend. I'm not doing any videos. But at the end of the day, it's 
on. All we can do is, you know what, just look within, enjoy your weekend. My battery is critically low, so I got to go. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Take care.